Hi, my name is David Steele. I'm a product manager at Arcturus. In a previous video, I showed you how you can unpack, set up, and configure the UCMK60 VOIP board and module. Today, I want to talk to you about some of the more advanced integration possibilities, including using the dedicated I.O. control interface. If you haven't watched the introduction video already, you might want to check that out first. That way, you'll be a little bit more familiar with the system. So the UCMK60 supports two operating modes. It supports an autonomous operating mode and a controlled operating mode. In this video, I'm going to focus primarily on the autonomous operating mode, which is intended for standalone devices, and it exclusively uses the I.O. control interface. In the introduction video, we used this interface to create a really simple push-to-call application. What I want to talk to you about today is extending that paradigm so that we can integrate external equipment, or we can even connect the UCMK60 to a host microcontroller, an I.O. block, or a PLC. So let me explain what I have here. I have the system solutions board. It's connected up to my micro network. This is just the same standalone network that I set up in my introductory video. And the only real change is that I've added this daughter card, which is connected to the system solutions board using the two 60-pin header connectors. Now, what this daughter card does is it breaks out some of the additional I.O. functionality into uh, a 3 by 4 keypad-style matrix of push-button inputs and also a row of LED outputs. There are a total of 47 I.O. with dedicated functions that are effectively a direct connect to the Freescale K60 microcontroller. These provide stateless autonomous operation for a variety of functions, call control, call progress, status, volumes, and mute settings. A signal description table is available from the support site that describes all of the dedicated I.O. signals. What I'm going to do now is run the same basic push-to-call demo from the introduction video and describe what happens uh, with the signals. The first thing I'll do is I'll just point out the uh, basic idle state. Uh, so right now I can see that output number one is on. That means that I'm registered and ready to place a call register with my SIP server. Output number three is on. This means the network is ready, which in this case means I've got a DICP lease and the network heuristic test has passed. Output number four is off. That's the alarm output. An alarm condition is identified if uh, the network heuristic test fails, the link state should drop, uh, if I'm in DHCP mode and I haven't received a DHCP lease, if the device can't register with the SIP server, or if it's configured to be in controlled mode and no host application is connected. So let me just uh, reach across here and I'm just going to call the device from my IP phone. And you might be able to hear the uh, call progress announcement uh, from the K60 through my headphones. I can see that output number two is blinking. That's the visual ring indicator and a call progress indicator. Not to be confused with output number 10 over here, which is the dedicated ring indicator. We also have output number five, which is the amp enable signal. That signal can be connected to an external amplifier to turn it on or to mute an external music service, background music service. I'm going to answer this call. And I'll notice that uh, output number two is now solid. That means the call is in progress. And output number 10, which was a dedicated ring indicator, has transitioned to off. And output number nine, which is the hook state indicator, has transitioned to on. Uh, the hook state means that uh, I'm off hook now and that I've got an active call in progress. So what I want to do next is, while I've got this call active, is I want to show you one of the more advanced uh, features of the UCMK60. Uh, but to do that, I've, I want to show you what I've set up in uh, System Manager first. So this is the System Manager. It's used to detect and configure UCMK60 devices. And I can see my device right here. I'm just going to double click on it, and that will bring up the configuration page. Now, what I wanted to show you that I've already got configured here is under the Control tab. And it's uh, the external door lock signal. I've got it set up right now for a DTMF3 in a duration of five seconds. And what this means is that the UCMK60 will listen for the RTP DTMF event digit 3 during an active call. If it's detected, it will activate an output, in this case it's output 24, for a period of five seconds. So I still have a call in progress. Why don't we uh, give it a shot? OK, so I'm just going to reach over and I'm going to press uh, DTMF3 on my uh, IP phone. And I can see that uh, output 24 has turned on for uh, five seconds. And now it's turned off again. As you can see, if we were to connect that uh, output to a door striker plate actuator, it would be a simple way to create an autonomous IP-based door entry uh, control application with virtually no need for uh, additional development. 
OK, I'm going to terminate this call by pressing uh, SW2, and the system uh, should return to, uh, to idle. I hope this simple demo helps you understand some of the additional I.O. control possibilities that are available using the UCMK60 VOIP board module. For more information, please check out ArcturusNetworks.com, and we look forward to helping you with your next application. Thanks for joining me today.